today we are going to be doing a very brief tutorial on how to import into Virto Studio very large poly count models into virtual reality. So let's suppose we have a file. This one is one I downloaded from TurboSquid that I'm sure has very close to or at least a million polygons. It's a Blender file. I'm going to load it directly. Um, Virto Studio can load many types of Blender files, but if you have trouble with them, I recommend converting them to something else like a I don't know, an OBJ or a DAE. But this file is pretty small for the poly count size, which is why I'm going with it. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to go into VR and then I'm going to show you how to reduce the poly counts in VR and, to get the performance you might want so you can keep your poly counts under the millions. And then I'm going to show you how to do it in desktop mode on the same computer using the same program, just two different modes. So I'm going to launch Ferto in VR first. And then I'm going to walk into my room and I'm I think we're going to be good here. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to import scene and go to hard drive because I actually have that Blender file on my hard drive and it's under downloads, head. And I'm going to ask it to load the head.blend file. I'm going to see a spinning stopwatch while I wait for it to load. This might take a while. There it is. So, I am hitting very easily 90 frames a second in VR right now. In other words, this particular mesh doesn't seem to have a problem. Let me get rid of this weird plane. Doesn't seem to have a problem running at 90 frames a second at all. I'm just getting my lighting the way so I can get it from two sides here. Okay, so here's my mesh. I want to select everything that I see here and just kind of rotate it so that I can actually get a better look at it. So there it is. So first things first, if I want to actually take the poly count of this thing and I want to reduce it so that it is, you know, so let's suppose this model wasn't a million polygons, let's suppose it was several million and I really wanted to get the poly count low enough so that on low end VR PCs I can still render it at 90 frames a second and not risk any problems. The first thing I want to do in that case is I have multiple meshes here, in other words I can grab this thing and rip pieces of it off and that's not very optimal. So it would make more sense for me to take everything I see here, select it, and merge it into one mesh object. So that's what I'm going to do first. First, I'm going to make sure I really did grab everything I did. And then I'm going to go into the properties menu, go to more. And there's a menu option down here called merge selected mesh objects. And what this does is it takes everything and puts it into a single object type. And the reason why that's useful is when I go into edit mode here, this is going to take a few seconds. There's a lot of polygons it has to generate the wireframe for when you go into edit mode. This is one of the reasons why we're reducing the poly counts, obviously. So, waiting for it to do all its computations. There we go. So there are so many polygons here that I have to get almost right next to it to see them all. I mean, it's crazy. And I am definitely under probably even 45 frames a second here. This is too many polygons for edit mode. I'm at about 915,000 right now. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to do a couple things. First things first, when I reduce poly counts, I have to make sure there are no quads. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to select and then select all. And then I'm going to go ahead and say face and I'm going to say split all quads. When I do this, I should see a stopwatch. So what it's doing right now is it's computing, splitting all the quads down to triangles because my polygon reduction algorithm requires no quads to exist in the mesh. So that's essentially what it's doing there. So now I've essentially split all quads down to uh, triangles. The last step I'm going to do here is I'm going to say go. I'm going to go to mesh. I'm going to go to reduce poly count, and I'm going to reduce this by a very large percentage. So that essentially, the ratio here is how how much percentage of the the, the mesh you want to reduce by. So if I say 75 percent, only 25 percent of the original poly count is going to remain. The higher you go, the less pretty it's going to look, and less of its original shape it's going to retain but the more performance you're going to get. So I'm just going to click 75 here, let this thing do its thing. And at this point, I've you see immediately my frame rate's well above 90 now. I have 256,000 poly count. The original shape is retained. And when I go out of edit mode, you can barely tell that I've gone from a million to 256,000. But the, the performance of this thing is now much more reasonable and much more what you would expect just playing with the lighting. Much more what you'd expect for uh, doing VR. So, 
That is how you do this in VR. I'm going to pop back over to desktop mode, do the whole thing over, and show you guys. Because there might be a case where you have so many polygons, there's no way you could even get around without getting sick in VR. So we're going to go back to library. I'm going to give this a name. I call this head one. So this is the one I did in VR. Now I'm going to walk back over to my computer. I'm going to do this in desktop mode. Okay, so this is the same VR computer. I'm going to ask OBS to now record. Oh, I already was recording the desktop. Okay, so I'm going to go into desktop mode here now, and I'm going to do the whole thing again, but this time I'm outside of VR. So essentially the experience now is that if the poly count was insanely too high and it would never even load into edit mode in VR, I can essentially do this uh, this way. So I'm going to import the scene, hard drive, downloads, head, head, and there it goes. I'm going to wait for it to load. There it is. So I basically do the exact same process again, except this time I am uh, in desktop mode. So I can hit delete, take this. I can zoom out a bit, select everything, hit T to select, hold control, deselect the light, go back to auto with the A key. Uh, I'm not too worried about rotating this right now. I mean, I can, it doesn't matter. Ask this thing to rotate this thing into some form of alignment. I can go back out of here. So there's my head. I can go to same menu flow. You hit materials, more, merge selected, merge is complete. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to center the camera here to the selection. Get up close and personal with this beast. Hit E for edit, wait for it to compute the wireframe, which is again, an expensive operation when you have this many polygons. So we're just waiting for it to do its thing here. Okay, again, we see that we have 957,000 polygons. I'm gonna hit Control A to select everything. I'm gonna say face. I'm gonna say split quads, which is what I've done. Again, I'm gonna wait for this to finish. The splitting the quads is probably the most time consuming part of uh, this process. If you're guaranteed that you never generate any, any quads when you export your file to Blender, then this step can be skipped, but um, you will get an error if you try to reduce the mesh count without doing it. So here we go, mesh, reduce poly count by 75%. Doesn't have to be exact. You hit apply. And it's done. So at this point, I see I'm again at 256,000 faces. At this point, immediately, without even quitting the program, I can hit the VR button, go walk back into my room and watch the thing in VR, make adjustments in VR, go back to desktop mode as I see fit. So that's how you do it, guys. That's how you take very high poly count meshes and run them through Virto Studio VR. Thanks for watching.